Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews with Christopher Brown. I am your host, and today I am honored, and uh, it's my pleasure to have our guest in. He is currently getting ready for his Western Canadian uh, tour of his, uh, uh, I would say, uh, his recent album, The Remission. He is going to be playing on July 2nd and July 3rd here in the province of Alberta on July 2nd as part of the Jazz YYC summer fest and he's going to be playing at festival hall tickets are now on sale tickets can be found in the show notes so if you want to pick up your tickets and get uh get to a great show on july 2nd i'd highly recommend you do that after the show after this episode and uh andy Mil- uh, milne sorry <laughs> i literally told me beforehand that i still screwed it up andy thank you so much for doing this it's an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show nice to be here thanks for having me um, Andy, uh, my first question to all my musical guests who come on the show is, where did your passion for music come from? Oh, I don't know if I know where my passion for music comes from, because it's, it's something I've lived with my, most of my life. I just always enjoyed it. And I can only assume it was just a gift that, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm blessed to sort of be able to experience, but also to, you know, share with other people, both from the point of view of audiences, but also from the point of view of people that I mentor. Um, but I mean, music has a very infectious quality to it for me that, you know, when it's, when it's humming, and I don't mean like, like humming with my voice, but just when it's purring, like, you know, like a, the same way uh, someone who likes cooking or someone who loves uh, racing cars or someone who loves a certain sport or someone who loves architecture, you know, it's these things that just have a certain beauty to them that I think you, if you if you appreciate them you appreciate them you know I don't know if I know the you know source other than the creator you know um one of the reasons why I was so uh, hap- not happy but so honored to have you on the show is um in 2017 you had sort of a life-altering diagnosis uh, to put upon you because Anyone who's listened to my show knows that in 2020, I was diagnosed with cancer as well. I'm still yeah. currently currently going through treatments for this. And this is why this, this new album of yours, The Remission, so, so speaks to me. And I've been listening to it over and over again for the last few days since we've rearranged this interview. And I, I, I want to take go back to that first diagnosis in 2017 for you, because as a musician who... I've listened to your back catalog and your music speaks to so much and your last two albums during your diagnosis and the remission part of it. And with this new album, the remission, you're able to speak to me in such a way that I find it so beautiful. Talk to, talk to me through your diagnosis, if you're willing to, and because I don't want to put words in your mouth, and getting through that moment with music, because during my time, I found music was so instrumental of helping me get through my diagnosis of a tumor, cancer on my brain and going forward. Wow. Um, um, <laughs> like that we hit it hard on the show. I apologize. We hit it hard. <laughs> well, I mean, first of all, I, 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 I hope you're OK. And, and, I, and that's an interesting kind of uh, kind of brotherhood that we're kind of sharing here. But I mean. I, that's powerful to know that my music is you know able to speak to you coming from that kind of angle specifically with cancer because I mean for me of course I wrote this music and I created this album kind of in the the wake of a couple of years of heavy uh, you know realignment in my life and and that was that was difficult I mean maybe the making the music part and you know, I'm more used to because it's not my first album right so I've I've had an opportunity to make a few albums in my life. So of course there's challenges associated with that, but um, the challenges that, that I was experiencing personally, um, you know, I didn't have, I didn't have that kind of uh, track record with like, you know, it's like the first like, Oh wow. Major kind of opportunity to um, face your mortality and think about like what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong and what you need to change. And, uh, you know, mainly in terms of your lifestyle. And, and, and um, so one of the things that was just, I guess, for me, uh, important was that I lived 
you know, with purpose that was, you know, even maybe more imminent, you know, um, which, you know, you don't think about just generally as a younger person, you don't necessarily think about all the time. Um, but I think, that, you know, that what went into the music or what maybe, I'm not sure what it was that, that specifically that, that really spoke to you, but I mean, just perhaps knowing someone's experience or knowing someone like persevering and triumphing and, and, and kind of pulling themselves together and having the support of their loved ones to, to be able to continue on their path, but to kind of make a pivot. And I had to make a pivot, you know, at, at least I felt like I needed to make a pivot. I mean, some things were, you know, they're just thrust on you in terms of what your um, health care givers are saying, this is what we highly recommend you do. Yeah. Um, and then there's what you do to kind of support that um, recommendation. And so that's just, you know, that was a life pivot for me. And part of it was like starting this group in a way. And, 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 you know, the album, you know, kind of had two, um, two staff, I sort of had two stabs at this album because I made one version of it that I didn't like. Um, and so I went back into the shed and, and, and reconsidered and, and wrote new music for it. So some of that comes from perhaps just my creative process and needing to get comfortable with where I'm going. But some of it comes from just like, uh, I think, you know, um, perhaps maybe it's even almost, a, 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 I never even thought about this till now, but perhaps it's even a matter of like, you know, you're hurrying up to slow down sometimes. Um, you know, when you get a diagnosis, there's a time frame. generally. You know, you're saying, okay, doctors are saying you should do something probably need to do something in these next four months, six months at the very outside, but I wouldn't want to go that late if I prefer not to. I mean, there's a certain amount of medical liability of physicians covering their ass and surgeons covering their ass. So they want to tell you to do something sooner rather than later. But at the end of the day, you're like, okay, there's a rush to kind of make big changes and make big decisions and schedule and plan around this, you know? And, um, you know, I'm a kind of person that's often you know, gone all in on things, you know, but I really get methodical about them. And so sometimes you don't have the luxury of like taking your time and, you know, pondering every possible scenario. Uh, and, and I think and that, that with cancer is not necessarily that kind of forgiving that way. <laughs> <laughs> but to sort of answer your question about what spoke to me is uh, when I listened to the remission, the entire album, like literally my husband's been yelling at me because I've been listening it on the speakers at 11 o'clock <laughs> at night, because that's what I do when I'm in sort of that sort of that weird moment in my life is uh -huh. it takes me away. It takes me away from the moment that I'm in the struggles that are currently going on. And yeah. it just, it's an escapism. And there's very few albums that I can listen to over and over again that makes me just forget about the worries. And this, and you, you and your group have done an amazing job that it speaks to me in such a weird moment in my life right now. And it's come at a moment when we got some weird news. So I, I, I want to, I, I personally want to thank you. Honestly, this is why I really wanted to do the interview because when I listened to it and then I found the backstory because I, I try to listen to the story before I read bios. And then I was like, holy moly, this is huge. And this, this, and you have gone through basically what I'm going through right now. Is it easy to write an album that while it can speak to you, the artist that conveys what you're trying to get across to the general public when people sit down and listen to it because when I listen to it I, I I swear to god you were writing this album for me that's how like it like poignant it was for me to listen to this album and their your piano skills are amazing and I just I thank you for this and I, I hate I'm not oh, trying to blow awesome. smoke up your butt uh, butt right now it's just I, <laughs> You, you've been able to speak to me in a way that I've never been able to speak to an artist in this way. So thank you. Oh, you're, you're welcome. That's super. I mean, I really cherish that compliment. It's very meaningful. I, I mean, honestly, it, it, I don't have control of how people experience <laughs> what I create. Right. And so it's, it's wondrous that, that um, there's such a direct emotional and kinetic energy, you know, transmitted, um, through this music that that you experienced that it felt like I'm really speaking to you because of course there's so many stories that people have 
that you just couldn't know about. I wouldn't have known about this until 15 minutes ago, you know? So like, th th this is the kind of stuff that like, you know, I guess what it comes down to is like, when I'm making music, I'm trying to make honest work. And I think if there's honesty in the work, then perhaps that ability to, to, to sort of transcend the airwaves in a way so that it does feel, so you feel like you're being spoken directly to and the next person maybe feel like they're spoken directly to is more possible because of the honesty in the work. And I suppose that maybe is my number one priority in a lot of ways is to kind of try to have that, you know, honesty that's communicated both in the performance, but also in the, in the writing, you know, in the, in the intent behind something. I mean, look, we all as musicians have influences and those influences are part of what, you know, allow us to speak, you know, but they're not everything. They're just part of what allows us to speak. And so the rest of it is kind of like, well, wow, I mean, I'm a person and I have my own uh, views and my own tastes and my own experiences that I have to channel. And, and I need to do it in a certain kind of portion that does have an honesty for me. Or, you know, and I can take advice from someone or I could take input from some from a band member and whatnot and, and these kinds of things but at, at the end of the day i've got to like try to like have a certain amount of honesty and cohesion with how i speak with the music and how i put it all put it all together in an album and that's that's i guess maybe one of my big priorities you know in, in a way and so that's wonderful to hear you talk, talk about that you know this music you know on this album having that kind of effect because for me i mean i wrote a lot of the music I wrote, um, I guess in 2019, because um, we recorded it in 2019, but I, I, uh, I mean, there's a couple of songs I wrote a few years before, you know, one tune I wrote probably, oh God, I probably wrote it in like uh, 2004, 2005, maybe six. Um, Couple other pieces that were written probably 2011, 2012, that kind of that sort of zone, and I kind of, you know, gave them a new, you know, interpretation and 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 explored them with the group, um, you know. But the body of the material was written closer to the time of of, of recording and certainly with the group in mind, you know. Um, and so that's all in the kind of wake of who I am as a person at that point in 2019, which is like, for people listening, like I, I, I went in 2017, as you mentioned, I had like, you know, cancer diagnosis at the, in the you know, second half of 2017, had started treatment in the end of 2017, all the way through most of 2018. And then, you know, comes the sort of, you know, personal rehabilitation in a way, you know, and kind of getting back into your stride and and sort of making artistic decisions in my case and then some professional decisions as well and like they were and personal decisions that were like all kind of as a result of of, of this kind of you know health reckoning you know um and so then that's sort of in the air for you for me you know and then and that comes out in, in the music just in terms of um how i make decisions and, and, and what i hear you know it, it, I, I don't i mean sometimes it is a bit more of a deliberate um concerted effort to say I'm going to channel this particular thing and I'm going to sit down and write a piece of music about this specific thing um this was more of a larger sort of life reaction you know and so it was kind of easy for me to kind of say oh I'm going to call this album of remission well and that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit here is so this album is sort of a I don't want to say a, a sort of a letter to your new life because you're now in remission i'm assuming from the name of the title um when you sat down and prepared this album because this album just did not come together in one shot i'm assuming it took a few moments and you talk about honesty and to get the honest feeling that you want it to in this album um at the end of the day like i i can sing praises to it until the day i die basically but is it the album that when you sat down and started to write that sort of letter to where you were or the the follow up to your uh, the album beforehand? And I apologize. It's uh, literally a season of beginning. Sorry. Um, I just had, being, yeah. yeah, I just had to look over at my notes here for yeah. a quick section. Um, yeah. Is it 
are you proud of what you accomplished because you've you went through hell and back i apologize because anyone who has gone through cancer knows exactly what hell looks like sometimes are you proud because you've junos yeah. and <laughs> like you like <laughs> this could not have come at a better time for you because everything that you've put into it in the last few years has culminated to a juno award yeah, well, it's pretty. It was a pretty epic uh, period of my life. It, it has been a fairly epic period of my life. I'll say that for sure. I mean, starting with getting this diagnosis, and then, uh, I mean, I guess literally, um, how this how did that sequence? Yeah. So then, yeah, getting this diagnosis, going through all this treatment, and then winning a Juno for the album "The Seasons of Being," which was about me channeling uh, alternative he healing modalities to create music and all the while while i was creating that album my body was saying hey uh we're getting ready to announce this big uh, cancer reveal so stay tuned you know i i was sort of fighting it from the point of view of trying to you know maintain you know a, a sort of healthy you know balance between kind of getting help seeking alternative modes of help help and also writing this music that was kind of focusing on health wellness and kind of knowing the emotional core and, and, and providing that information through music of, for the people playing. So all that is happening. And, that, and so, so, so by the time I won that first Juno, which was in 2019, um, that was epic because, I mean, I just sort of triumphed really, you know, through all a lot of the really heavy lifting. Um, and then so to win a Juno for this next record, which was really a sort of ode to that, Pre, that period that I was going through in 2017 through 2019 you know, when I made the record uh, was really, you know, especially put the record on 2020, of course, but then the pandemic hit. And so that, um, you know, but it won the Juno in 21. And that, and that was, you know, that was extraordinary, you know, just to kind of have that happen anyway, but particularly very personal music, very personal experiences that I shared openly, you know, and, and, and I think, um, that's, it's pretty gratifying because it's, you know, it's, um, I don't do it for that, but it's like, it's wonderful to hear people like yourself saying that they really reached, you know, really reached you and spoke to you in these ways and then have audiences, you know, and, uh, you know, hopefully on this tour as well, people being able to just perform this music and, and, and talk about it will be equally, um, rewarding because again, there's an honesty to it. So it's like, you, you know, it's nice to be able to have it embraced because then it's not a rejection of your honesty. We're, well, let's talk about the upcoming tour because this is airing Tuesday, so literally a day after we record this. And on the 16th, so Thursday, you're in Winnipeg. You're starting. Yeah. You're getting back out there. Um, yeah. Is this your first tour since the COVID restrictions have sort of started lifting? Or have you been doing smaller tours back in Ontario and New York? Is this your first swing out through Western Canada since uh, the global pandemic? It's definitely the first swing out through Western Canada since oh, several years. <laughs> At this point, it's been a long time. Um, but I did a couple of, I've done a few gigs uh, over the last seven months oh, eight months nine months i guess we could you listen did a, a string of like three gigs in the fall in october did a couple gigs in ontario and one gig in michigan um and i've done gigs with other people but just a handful not not that many so this is the first tour and it's a real tour it's just like we're going i mean my first gig in canada is not actually with unison it's with a saxophonist who i work with uh she's originally from germany ingrid laubra and we did an album. Uh, we did an album last summer that came out about a month ago, uh, and so this is like the first show we're going to do together um, and, and present that music from her album called Fragile. Um, but then the week after that, Unison starts the tour. You know that we're doing for about three weeks, and so it starts in the U.S., makes her way through Canada, Eastern Canada, and then to, or sort of Central Canada, I suppose, and then and then Western Canada. And then we go through California, uh, Oregon, California, and finish up in New York, where we'll then uh, also record a new CD. 
So I, I I'm got actually in the got, middle of got, making new, writing new music right now too. <laughs> oh well, we don't want to take you away from that. But I want I want to know: are, are you looking forward to getting back out on the road? Because as an artist, you must enjoy the uh, audience when you're sitting in for playing in front of an audience. Because during COVID, I'm not sure if you did uh, uh, COVID Facebook Live sessions or tried to do them as much as possible to keep your uh, fan base engaged, but also just play as well you must be getting like excited to get back out and actually tour again. Right. I am. I mean, it's, it, it's going to be nice to see um, other musicians performing and touring and, and, and sort of being in this festival environment. It's kind of a nice um, bringing together of, of, of different musical activity uh, under one sort of like concentrated time period too. But also I'm looking forward to playing with the guys in the group because I can practice. I mean, I just, before we came on, I was practicing, and I'll go back to that as soon as we finish uh, by myself. And that's, that's, um, it's kind of gratifying in a certain sense, although, you know, you're not really performing, you're, you're practicing, but I'm looking forward to the surprises and, and, and the sort of beauty, the beauty that the guys in the group can bring to the music. So I'm super, super stoked to be able to do that and have like their companionship for, you know, three weeks where we're really, I don't know, having dinner together, traveling and playing every night. And you know, I'm really looking forward to that and then be able to make a recording at the end of it. It's a bonus. Right. So, but it's, you know, it's something that we've missed. I, I did some of those sort of, you know, zoom, you know, gigs. My wife is a singer. So we, we would do a few of those things from home. So at least the two of us were in the same room. Um, they weren't as, you know, you know, they weren't that gratifying to do, to be honest with you. We did the, we did a handful of them. Um, but it's not it's not quite the same to to be able to you know perform for a, a, a live audience that you can see and feel and talk to beforehand and afterwards and even during so that's that'll be nice so i am so as i said at the beginning of the interview you are in calgary the where i'm currently recording this in uh, my hometown right now and you'll be in edmonton the day after on july 2nd you'll be in calgary on july 3rd you'll be in up in edmonton what can people of Alberta expect to hear when you make your two stops here in the, the I would say Prairie Province, but I would say that's more Saskatchewan. So the more yeah. cowboy related <laughs> uh, uh, province. The, 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 the oil and cow, the, the beef, and, I guess, I don't know, the beef, oil and uh, cow, cow experience, I don't know. Cow exactly. Well, what, 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 can, what can they expect? Because uh, as you said, this is going to be your first tour with the guys in a while. And uh, many people might know you from previous albums. This new one, The Remission, I like I said, I'm going to be there. I bought my tickets the moment after I heard and I saw you. My husband is being dragged along to show to, to this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we will. We, we will be there. Uh, what can people expect to hear? Uh, new stuff, old stuff off your current album, The Remission, off your newest album that you're currently writing and going to be recording here soon. What can people expect? Yeah. Both. Uh, <laughs> you answered it. You answered it. I'll, I'll, we'll be playing stuff from the album and we'll probably, you know, by the time we get to Alberta, we'll definitely have been breaking in um, the new music as well uh, because that's kind of the whole point in a way is to be able to have time to finesse where it's going so that when we get in the studio we can just play it i mean because the remission frankly was recorded after like a i don't know that tool was probably a week week and a couple of days it was just not not a long tour it's maybe seven gigs at the most um and we recorded that album after you know having a short tour that was enough to kind of or orient ourselves around like what worked and what needed punching up and revision in terms of the music. So that that's sort of the nice sequence that, that if you can do it, I mean, literally like we did it like the day after we got back kind of thing. And this is pretty much, this is the day after the last gig we're gonna go in the studio. So um, we'll, do a, we'll do a mixture of both maybe, you know, and I, I, I still need to figure out like some of the other you know pieces that we might perform that are not uh scheduled to be recorded yet i had I, I, I was laying awake last night thinking about it and i have to sort of like pull some material together still that, that that's sort of um appropriate so i i guess i should have asked this question before i went and jumped into the tour stops here in calgary and edmonton but 
who are the innocent? Like this is a new, a semi relatively newer part of your repertoire because you were with another group beforehand. Now you're with the unison. So when, how did this group come about? How did you get, uh, get involved with this? Uh, the other two members of the, the unison. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I, I formed unison, you know, as a result of kind of making a decision that I wanted to finally take, take having a piano trio seriously because the people who had, pushing me to do it friends and musicians had said say, yeah you should do a trio you should really do a trio you know people don't know you as a pianist as well as they should you should do a trio you know and it's like it's a very venerable kind of format for a pianist in jazz and and, and I just sort of I thought I, I thought I'll get around to it kind of thing and I was pushing myself to just sort of do these other projects and I just resisted for a long time until this all kind of life-changing period where I was like you know what this is the time this is literally the time, man. So just, just take it on. And so at that time, I had been playing uh, a few, well, I guess a little before this time, I'd been playing uh, in, in John A. Bear, the bassist in the group. His, he had a group called Rambling Confessions. And so we did a bunch of gigs together, made an album together. And this was like in the early, I guess, around 2010 in that zone. Um, so we were playing together a lot and I was really developing an affinity with playing with him. And so he started, we started doing some gigs together with my wife, Latanya Hall, who's a great vocalist. And so we were, we were doing some gigs together and, and, you know, most of those, some of those gigs had drums, some of them didn't have drums. So, but eventually I was thinking about this trio and I really was like, I, we, I'd even done one show, um, at Jazz at Lincoln Center as a trio. And I was still thinking about the drum thing and I was trying different people out. And then, you know, I just started thinking about Clarence Penn, who I had played never with. We just only known each other that it, pretty much the entire time we lived in New York and I'd never played with him. But every time I heard him play, I loved what I heard. And he just made every set, every situation just sound better in my opinion, you know? So I was kind of like, yeah, maybe maybe it's just sort of sitting right in front of me. I should just ask Clarence. I just kind of figured, ah, he's going to be too busy. And then one time I heard him play and I asked him, I said, man, we got to play together. And he goes, oh, call me. I said, okay, I'm going to call you. And so I did, you know, and so we started playing together. And then it was really quite magical the first time when the three of us played. So I thought, well, this is this makes sense. So I just wanted to start to develop this. And so that's that's kind of the story of how we came into being. It was sort of like, you know, this person you've known a long time is sort of there. You kind of just kind of thinking, yeah, maybe this, you know, just ask him, <laughs> you know, just ask him. Just Sometimes that's the weirdest, <laughs> the weirdest, easiest thing to do. Don't say that. Sometimes it's hard to ask somebody to <laughs> do something for you. Um, no, but- it's, it's well, that's why I say it's weird because it's like, it's easy because when you think about it, asking somebody doesn't cost you any money, right? That's true. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's like, it's like some, like some things are like more difficult to do. It's like, it, it may take effort, but it's like, literally, it's like, you just need words and, and you could ask somebody, you know, it's free basically. Yeah. Um, they can say no. <laughs> that's true. The worst thing they can say yeah. is no. Like at the end yeah. of the day, literally the worst thing they can say is no. Yeah. Uh, my, uh, my last question is though, the name Unison. Well, where is it derived from? Is it something that the uh, the group, of, the three of you, got together and thought of, or where did the name Unison? Because that's where, I, like, I was like, okay, it's a unit. Like when you listen to the album, it's you guys are unified and you guys sound amazing. It's just, is it that, or is there is there a hidden meaning that we need to know about about Unison? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not really a hidden meaning. A good friend of mine, Jan Sort, who is worked as a publicist in New York for a long time where we were i was throwing names around and she was sort of i think we just i don't know if we were at the dinner or something or we just chatting and she helped me kind of like commit to that name because i think it was on the table i just like the idea of the synergy that three people who are really kind of trying to play telepathically in a way but really trying to play as one uh, i just like that that image and um you know so i was but i was like looking for the right way to frame it and I had, I had you know of course I sometimes I make things too complicated and so you know I think she just pushed me like no dude this is this you should go with that Andy Milne and you just call it that like, okay nice and simple sometimes keep it simple as they <laughs> always say um 
Andy, I want to thank you so much for sitting down and chatting with me today. I like I said, I, I am a fan of the, the the album Remission. I am currently getting through Fragile because it's just something else that I've learned that uh, I, I had started listening to it. I, like I started listening to it earlier this morning before the interview, just because I wanted to. I it came across the album. I was like, "What's this? This this I've not uh, seen this album yet, so I need to learn yeah, about yeah. it." So. Uh -huh. uh, I, I, you have a fan out here in Calgary. You have probably many fans out here in Calgary. And, and I look forward to seeing you live July 2nd at the Festival Hall here in the city of Calgary uh, as part of the Jazz YYC Summer Festival. So thank you so much for doing this uh, and greatly appreciate it for coming on and taking time out of your busy schedule to do this. Oh, my pleasure. Great to meet you. Come please say hello when you're at the show. Will do. So as I said beforehand, uh, the links to purchase tickets for the uh, show here in Calgary will be in the show notes. And we'll put the Edmonton link as well, just in case uh, we have our Edmonton listeners tuning in and they want to pick up a ticket as well. And the links to Andy's uh, websites will be uh, down there as well. Um, Andy, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, this has been the Cross Board Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, get up from behind social media for at least 10 minutes and go have a conversation with somebody because it helps our society and helps our democracy. Talk to you later.